okay so we have got this question in front of us the name of this question is clean feed company this is one of the past examination question relating to the area of performance management what are we gonna do we're gonna start discussing about this question clean feed company let's have a discussion about this question clean feed company Now, it says Clean Feed Company is a large supplier of environmentally friendly products. What is their focus? Environmental friendly products. The company is split into two divisions the household goods divisions and the personal care division. Okay, so they have got two divisions the household goods and the personal care. The two divisional managers are responsible for generating revenues and controlling costs. So the managers, they generate revenue. That means the responsibility for sales. They control costs. That means responsibility for costs. And hence, it's a profit center. Both of them make their sales and purchases on credit having negotiated 30-day credit terms with both customers and suppliers. While divisional manager can authorize capital expenditure up to $50,000, any expenditure above this is controlled by head office. So that means major expenditure is head office. All of the head office running costs are shared equally between the two divisions and are put in their indirect cost below. The performance of each division is assessed by head office using ROI based on net assets. So head office, what does it do? It assess the performances of both the division using the ROI based on net assets. Now, each of the divisional manager is paid an annual salary of 180,000 plus an annual bonus based on ROI achieved of the division. So, each of the divisional manager gets a bonus based on ROI. Now, what next is there? It says each division is expected to achieve a minimum ROI of 15% for which no bonus is payable. Okay. Minimum ROI is 15% and no bonus would be payable. However, for every whole percentage point above this that the dividends achieve, managers can accrue a bonus of 3% of the annual salary. Of the annual salary. Maximum bonus can be earned as 10% of the annual salary. During the year ending 31st August 9, head office decided to invest 2 million in a new computer system in division HG, the household goods division. This was against the advice of divisional manager and caused a lot of disruption to customer orders. Due to these issues, head office decided that a similar plan installation would not take place at the division PC. For it relates to both the divisions, the sales, the direct cost, the indirect cost, non-current assets, inventory, cash, receivable, payable, overdraft, number of orders completed within seven days of the order being placed, customer complaints as a percentage of total sale volume, staff turnover rate. So requirement is for each of the divisions calculate the return on investment. For the year ending 31st August 2009, the amount of bonus which each of the managers will receive for the year ending 31st August 9. So apparently a simple situation, division HG, division PC. The formula for ROI is basically divisional profit divided by investment and the investment is equals to non capital employed the investment is equivalent to capital employed
and the capital employed is equal to non current asset minus current liability now what is actually going to happen try to understand this they're going to say the profit is sales minus direct cost minus indirect cost 12655 minus 5796 minus 40223 so there is actually a loss for division hg Whereas when we talk about the division PC, the profit is twenty two eighty four minus double one one three four minus six zero seven eight. The capital, or you could rather say net assets. Yeah, yeah, please. Okay, I've made a mistake. Okay. Is it right now? Is it right now? Okay, thank you. Now, the net assets are gonna be what? The net assets means asset minus liability. Now, asset minus liability is equivalent to equity, so it could actually be non-current asset minus current liability. So it's gonna be one four five seven zero minus current liability is zero. It could be twenty thousand six ninety eight minus. Okay, just wait a bit. The current liability includes the payable and the OD. So hence, resultingly, the return on investment is going to be this divided by this. And what are we going to do? we're going to have the percentages for it so one of them is 20.6% other is 33.43% requirement the part one now part two when we have to calculate the bonus so the bonus is being paid at what 3% of the and the manager the crew bonus of 3% of the annual salary for every percentage for every whole percentage above this that the division the chief managers accrue a bonus of 3% of the annual salary so you would say whole percentage above target is 5% is 13% they want whole percentage bonus per bonus per percentage is 3% 3% total bonus is this into this and this into this now what actually happens is that the maximum limit is 10% 10% hence bonus earned by manager is the minimum of these two is the minimum of these two Hence, it's the 10% that's the bonus that's earned. 
Now I'll just take you people through to it. Let me know if you understand this. Yeah, do you people understand this? How do I get the capital employed? Okay, there are multiple ways of calculating capital employed. The capital employed could be now when you calculate the capital employed, the capital employed could be calculated as debt plus equity. That's one way of doing it. The capital employed could be assets minus liabilities. The capital employed could be okay, it's capital employed is debt plus equity or it could be asset minus liability. Now, let me just recheck if I have made a bit of a mistake. I think that I made a bit of a mistake in this capital employed. I've taken the other formula. Let's just see. Okay, it's not non current assets, it's total assets minus current liability It's the total assets minus the current liability is your capital employed. So I'll make a bit of a amendment here I'll make a bit of amendment here because it's a slight error that I have made a bit. Anyways. Fourteen thousand five seventy plus one two eight six. Thank God we are working on Excel. Plus six fifty minus sorry plus one zero four zero minus eight hundred minus zero. That's what you have. Now here you have twenty thousand six ninety eight plus one nine eight four plus 3753 minus 1650 minus 2230 so it's basically 1% because 15% whole percentage above target is 1% whole percentage above target is 14% so the bonus earned is 3% and the bonus earned here is 10 percent I made a slight error in the computation of the capital so but now we have rectified it the capital has to be what the capital has to be your total assets minus current liability Now, is it okay to you all? Is it okay? Above 15 is 9. Okay, let it be 9%. 9%, right? So it's again 10% is the maximum. Yes, thank you. It's 9%. Yeah, is everyone else okay with it? Now, let's move a bit forward and let's try to discuss further. It says using your answer to part A and the data provided, assess the performance of each of the divisions, including management of working capital. It says there are four marks for calculations and eight marks for discussion. Now, can you just look at this question and try to see that how exactly are you going to draft your answer to it four marks for calculation so what type of calculations can you do and how exactly are you going to draft your answer can you just have a look at it
Yeah, is it done? Let's have a discussion on this. It says using an answer to part A and the data provided assess the performance of each divisions, including the management of working capital. Now, if you actually, uh, number one, what I would do is that I would calculate the ROI based on controllable profit. What would happen is that sales minus the direct cost controllable profit. Now, what happens is that we have got the net assets available also. So hence ROI on controllable profit. Now the sales is 12,655, 22,834. The direct cost are 5,796. The direct costs are 11,134. The controllable profit is going to be what? I bet the controllable profit is going to be the controllable profit is going to be 12655 minus 5796. Six, eight, five, nine. 22834 minus 11, one, Three four eleven thousand seven hundred. The net assets right now we just calculated them also. One six seven four six double two triple five. Hence, ROI based on controllable profit is going to be 40.96%. Then what happens is that 11,700, 51.88%. Now, what is it that we need to do? Just try to understand. The requirement is using the answer to part A and the data provided assess the performance of each division including management of working capital. Working capital of both divisions, division HG, division PC, current asset minus current liability is equal to 1286 plus 650 plus 1040 minus 800. is 2176 for this company the current asset minus current liability is gonna be 1984 plus 3753 minus double two three zero 
minus one six five zero. Now, what is actually going to happen is here. I bet what is actually going to happen over here is that. based on the available information in part A the HG division has only earned a profit of 16.16% whereas Whereas PC division has earned ROI of 24.9%. This indicates that PC division has performed better than HG division. However, considering that indirect costs are the allocation of the head office cost to each of the segments, each of the divisions, considering that the indirect costs are the allocation of the head office cost to each of the divisions the controllable profit is determined for each division as above and on this basis both divisions have performed well for the ROI such that both the managers would have earned bonuses to the maximum limit had the bonus been based on controllable profits. The working capital of PC is also better managed as compared to that of HG as PC has lower investment in working capital however it is relying on overdraft which is a short term source of finance furthermore ninety nine percent of the orders were completed within seven days of the order being placed for the HG in 2000X8 and this has dropped to 80% 2000X9 indicating that performance of HG has deteriorated 
whereas there is a nominal decrease in the percentage of orders completed within seven days for PC. In respect of the customer complaints, the HG complaints have increased 10 times of the complaints previously made whereas whereas that of the PC have doubled over the last year the staff turnover for HG is maintained whereas that of the PC has increased significantly and that could largely be due to strict actions being taken by the manager to ensure fulfillment of the target. Based on above, it could be concluded that the performance of that the performance of PC is better than that of HG except for the staff turnover rate in PC which is likely to be high because of lack of because of the lack of leniency being showed by the management so it is apparently the management is strict and the strict management is forcing the employees from PC to leave but at the same time the district management is ensuring that the results are produced at the same time the district management is ensuring that the results are produced Yeah, is that okay? Yeah. Yeah, because the reason being that uh, the examiner has not told anywhere that what is the what is the profit on the basis of which the bonus is being given so because you see we are not evaluating the performance in part a we are actually calculating the bonus and the requirement right 
they did not say anything that how do they calculate all that they say is that head office performance of each division assessed by head office using return on investment based on net assets now if they did not say anything so i've just assumed that it is going to be on the basis of overall profit it should be it should be it should it should be but the problem is that the i mean that's the right way of doing it but generally the companies they don't do it so unless the examiner actually keeps more marks for the calculations you don't do the controllable profit directly or if the examiner asks you what is the appropriate roi he has simply asked you for the roi so you could just do it from the basis of normal profit and you see i have done the evaluation in the other part maybe we could just try to check out the examiner's answer on it also but you see what happens is that uh, to me based on the situation where nothing has been given and i am specifically being asked to calculate the bonus so i would go for the normal roi calculation rather than controllable right okay you uh, uh we might actually try to check out if there is any answer available to this question also uh right but uh, for the time just keep it like this and i have actually done this controllable profit calculation here also because this part is giving me an open invitation to write down whatever that i wish to write down in case if you people would like to add up any points to this part do suggest are there any points that you people can suggest yeah hello everyone are there any points that you people can suggest okay now seems like no one has any points here okay lastly okay can you people suggest any pointers for the above yeah can you people suggest any pointers for the above yes it's basically available on the acca portal yeah please anyone any inputs okay i could just say that discuss whether 
the return on investment as a basis for assessing divisional performance and calculating bonus at clean feet is appropriate taking into consideration any issues which it may cause so now let me just give you an idea basically what's going to happen you could just try to see that uh, the investment is not 100% under the control of manager and instead head office decides about the investment the profits excluding the indirect costs allocated by the head office are under the control of the divisional manager always appropriate to evaluate performance on the basis of items which are controllable so controllable profit is a better measure rather than using ROI as the investments are not wholly within the control of not wholly within the control of the divisional managers residual income could be used as an alternate but it is also impacted by the by the investments made because you see residual income also has the profit minus the income multiplied by desired return desired rate Is it okay now? Yeah, Savio, uh, Savio Pais, do you understand this? That residual income also has got the same thing. It's like profit minus the investment multiplied by the percentage return. So investment is also there. Okay. So what have we done? We have been able to do the calculations for these questions. And we have actually concluded these constructed response questions related to, related to this specific paper. Now, is that okay now?